my brother. How we doing, man? Brother. <laughs> oh, I'm doing all right, man. What's going on with y'all? How y'all living? Man, blessed, bro. Blessed. Blessed, black, and highly favored, bro. Okay. All right. Stay like that. Yeah. So uh, introduce yourself to the people, man. What's your name? Um, my name is uh, Brad Thompson. I go by Sonny Arquette. I guess that's my stage or performer name or whatever. Uh, just turned 30 this year, so 30 30. You know what I mean? Uh, Still feel good, you know what I mean? Still outrun anybody, you know. Look at him, talk your talk, King. <clears throat> talk your talk, King. Still a dog in that weight room, still a dog in the box, in the boxing, you know what I mean? Still a dog on the dance floor, too. Um, <laughs> he said he knows, he knows. You know what I mean? Let's say I'm 30, um, from the east side, um, rapper, dancer, um, personal trainer, you know what I mean? Um, I guess half activist, rap uh, actor, too, I guess, whatever. Just. Just a multifaceted performer. I'm kind of adaptable. I kind of had a piece of everything. My primary is um, rapping, battle rapping, and dancing. So, Blessings. my primary. You said you're from the East Side? Uh huh. Cool. From cool. the East Side. The east Side. I went to John Marshall and Lawrence Central High School and all mm -hmm. that. So, that's East Side. If you know East Side. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Very familiar. Yeah, that's Very familiar. East Side. Um, but yeah, so I. John Marshall graduated 2010. That uh, went to Indiana, uh, went to Vincennes, and went to Indiana State. Graduated 2017, uh, bachelor's communication and public relations. So, uh, yeah, I'm I'm definitely uh, definitely East Side to the bone, but I'm definitely like spread out. Like my roots is deep, but the branches kind of stick out everywhere else. You know what I mean? Can't really judge the size of the tree by just the root, but just how much ground it cover. You know what I mean? So I feel like I'm that tree, the canopy that covers a lot of ground, kind of everywhere, whether here. I've been there, been there, I've been here. I kind of had a small taste of everything. So, you know, my life is pretty much like a buffet and everything that's on my plate is a collection of, you'll never get one thing, one food group dealing with me. So, you know, that's a health analogy too, cause I'm real big in health too. So that's a health thing. So, but go ahead. Nah, brother, man, you, you keep talking your talk. <clears throat> I'm ready for the analogies and the metaphors, man. All right, okay, I got, you know, I, I rap, so I do that. I mean, I'm. I'm obsessed with words. I'm the man with words. I've been those, so I've been words for a living, so we can do that. So let's let's dive deep into that then. You know what I'm saying? Why are words so important? Why are stories important to you? Um, I've always been like a real talkative person. Like, you know what I mean? I got, I'm the youngest of a thousand siblings. Uh, I've always been like a real talkative person. Um, con conversing or conversating since we just how we doing it. Conversing and talking to people and being in front of people has never been, I've never been shy. Like I almost get my power from that. So if I'm talking in front of just y'all or Madison Square Garden, I'm gonna be the same sunny and just the same comfortability. Um, I feel like everybody got a story and a lot of times people's depression and panic because they feel like either they might have this story but can't tell it, you know what I mean? Uh, they won't be acknowledged or they have this type of story but you know, they feel like nobody else has, nobody else has been through what they've been through, whether good or bad, like nobody can feel them. So it's just like, dang, I wish somebody could feel me. Everybody on this planet, I feel like is reaching or strives for some level of connectivity and some level of outreach somehow. So telling the stories and coming from where you come from, that's, 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 sometimes that's all you want. That's all rap, that's all art, music is, just coming from where I'm coming from. So whether through the times of enslaved Africans. I don't like to call them slaves because they was people before that. They was enslaved, so enslavement. But even before that, music and art and spoken, everything has been ingrained in, in, ingrained in human dynamic or even people dynamic. I mean, lions roared to let them know, hey, this is my jungle. You walk, you walk in the zoo and you pet the glass, he gonna make some noise, you know what I mean? So if you walk toward anybody else and, and if they a beast in whatever field they doing, they gonna make some noise. Ali ain't never, Muhammad Ali ain't never whispered in his life. You know what I mean? You walk into that ring, you gon' know Ali is a dog in that ring. That's Ali's ring. It ain't even the sport of boxing, it's the sport of Ali. Thanks. How I feel out with rapping, it's not even our form, it's my form. You mm. know what I mean? That, that's how you're supposed to feel. You know what I mean? Uh, not necessarily an arrogant way, but this is so competitive, you kinda gotta have that armor to even operate like that. You know what I mean? Um, I just feel like I got a lot to say and I got a lot of stories that I want to tell also. So from close loved ones who might not have the resources or the capability or the bravery or whatever, whatever else is stopping them from doing so, I've kind of always treated like my rap kind of like a, being like a news reporter, you know what I mean? So whether I go through it or not, a lot of stuff, it's kind of like what Tupac and Ice Cube used to do. Whatever I go through or not is pretty much just 
uh, inspiration that feeds into my music. So if she can't tell it, I got you. I'll let you know what's happening. Hey, this girl is going through this, and it's really just to bring awareness to something. I never necessarily like glorify or attach myself to something. I'm a reporter, whether it's me or whether it's a person here. Like, if I'm telling this plight of a black woman, I'm not a black woman, clearly. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm not a black woman, clearly, but she might not be able to rap, or she might not have the resources or the talent or art form or whatever to be able to say what she got to say that needs to be heard, but that's where I come in at. I'm, she's, her living experiences is almost like an existential ghostwriter for me. You know mm. what I mean? She's an existential ghostwriter. So her being next to me is giving me the fuel to where I'm like, okay, you giving me this inspiration to, to say this and to bring us to the masses and bring awareness to it. And then now that the awareness is here, this might give you some idea or light to be like, okay, I think I found my niche. Cause some people won't do things cause they don't know it don't exist yet. You know? Um, most kids where I'm from probably don't go to college because they don't think they can. I went to college, didn't think I could, you know what I mean? Um, I had to go to college and it's just to kind of save my life. Uh, yeah, it kind of saved my life. So I use the stories of people as almost, like I said, existential or experiential ghost writers for me. So if I met you and we just having a road trip, 10 hours driving or wherever, and you pop up and tell me your whole life story, I might not have been in your shoes, but I'm like, damn, that's crazy. That's, that's something I got to at least jot down and bring to everybody else, bring awareness to it. The awareness to it brings attention to it, might bring attention to you, you might bring attention to that, and then all of a sudden you have a product or you have something to say. Ain't no half-stepping, can't harbor no mixed emotions. My codependency made it harder to switch the focus. Be a man about it, boy, you was wrong, and you didn't know what it happened, son. You let with your heart when you shouldn't have shown it. Maybe you oblivious to the harm within their motives. Hurt people, hurt people, I get it all. If you didn't know this, walk off on me at my lowest. It started to come get exposed. Trying to circle back in my life when I'm starting to get in motion. Whether it's execution that helps self-improvement or wealth help or music won't help unless you do it. Steady reminder to your steps when you starting to forget the grind. You feeling defeated how you start remembering why Darkness within your mind when you starting to feel behind Or you broke from a deadly hole from a narcissistic supply When you do what you need to do You start as pit in your eyes Just start forget to decline No harm in willing to grind would be different Even when my, even, I got a I'm, I'm working on a project called Rumination um, Rumination is similar to like uh, The negative version of reminiscing You ever like reminiscing back in the day Like yeah I remember in high school we used to And then it's that the third we used to it's kind of like that, but rumination, I think by psychological and clinical psychology definition is pretty much like replaying certain things that have been in your mind like all the time and it's a constant churning of those. So um, I got out of a really bad relationship and um, my whole album rumination is inspired by therapy. So it's from January to I think up until this point, I've been in therapy. I've always been like an advocate for mental health even when I got to like, even when I got to college, I used to always be like, hey, I want to do therapy. Are y'all good? Are y'all good? I've had whole organizations where I kind of tried to focus on people getting therapy and mental health and you know what I mean? Whether it's somebody to talk to or not. Like we got a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms that now on the other side of them, I can see I'm like, oh, you acting like that because of that. Oh, come here because I see where that's going and I want to stop that before it goes somewhere down the drain and we can't pull you back out. So my whole thing was rumination is just pretty much talking about my experiences through therapy. It's like probably going to be like an eight to 10 track EP and it's going to be in different stages from the time to when I got into therapy to the up until this point now. So you talked a lot about um, during one of your earlier responses, the, the trauma that's inside of your story. Can you talk more about why mental health is such a priority to you and maybe even the role that the city played in helping you to understand that. Um, like I said, I, I wish I could, I wish I could have went to school for it, honestly, but I ain't trying to be in school for eight years because of that, a thousand years because of that, but kind of wish I would have did it because people come to me, uh, I've always been the empath of the group, so I feel like that would have fit. But I got tired of college real quick, so I graduated and it's gone. But it's all charting from childhood traumas, uh, good things, bad things, um, you know, dysfunctional interactions in my upbringing, from dysfunctional interactions to my relationships. You know what I mean? I got a really toxic relationship and it kind of just made me kind of have to sit down and destabilize me. Like, I kind of had to really just sit down and be like, okay, what just happened here? For the both of us, but for everybody, so I don't end up doing this again. And I just was in, in a reflective state and I had to learn that healing is not linear either. You know what I mean? People will make it seem like, oh, I burn sage and wear the crystal uh, waist beads and do yoga in the dirt, you know what I mean? And wear my little amethyst crystals around my neck. Nah, that's not how that goes. Like, you gon', it, it, it's like the stock market. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like the stock market every day. You just go up, you might plummet one of them days, but 
it's gonna be some some squiggly lines and some waves. You're gonna peak here and you're gonna valley down there, but it's all directional and it's all going to a specific spot if you let it. You gotta put the work in, period. I mean, that's even like when I go to the gym. If I wanna go from this weight to that weight, whether physically or if I wanna push this weight, it's not gonna just come today. It's not gonna come next week. It's not even come next month, but it won't come if I don't come to this gym. You know what I mean? Like. Why you wishing, like when I say you wishing cash fall from the sky all your life, you can't wish nothing to fall out of the sky. I kind of had to have a mentality to myself like nobody's coming to save you. So if nobody's saving you, you're going to have to save yourself. You're going to have to, like what's Tom Hanks on Castaway? Pretty much you're going to have to save yourself and build your own life raft and get over your own waves and get over your own storms in order to get back to where you was at. Somewhere along the line, that plane crashed and you got derailed and you sat here on this island all messed up. And you kind of had to sit there in solitude and isolation where you went crazy. Just talking to a ball named Wilson. He was talking to the ball. He was talking to a damn ball <laughs> named Wilson. And was whole arguing. Argue with this ball every day. You kind of got to sit there. You have to go crazy. It don't matter if you go crazy or you go up. You just got to keep going, period. You know what I mean? That's what I kind of had to learn like the hard way through like family deaths and all that, like a bunch of survivor's guilt that I dealt with. Like I said, being a natural empath, you always got a, a inclination to always attempt to try to heal something, but the empath always breaks down to themselves to build somebody else up. So brother, you had talked about um, a number of different things in that last piece, but something you definitely mentioned is the role that hip hop has played in your life as, a, as an artist, as a person, as a brother. Um, can you kind of talk more about what being an artist in Indianapolis, right, in NAP, how that's impacted your ability to grow and to heal and to better understand who you are as, as an individual? Ah, oh, yeah, there's the, um, there's a very, very, very big rap. There's several different battle leagues here. I was a part of, I can shout them out, uh, Circle City Battle League. It's one of the first ones I got a part of. Um, another cat that I know, One Shot Battle League, Raw Talent Battle League. It's a lot of high profile battle rappers that come here that get paid thousands of dollars to get on these stages. They grace these stages. You know what I mean? I just hope to be one of them, whether I'm battling or actually making music. Uh, there's a lot of different scenes here. Everybody will complain about the same things, not knowing that. That, you know, if everybody's like, yeah, this house is dirty, this house is dirty. I'm like, this is actually a pretty big house. And once it gets, once y'all realize that it's a pretty big house, all they gotta do is take a bit of cleaning and y'all got a mansion on y'all hands. People be like, there's no exposure here. Everybody's doing this, everybody's doing that. If everybody's doing the same mentality. It's just a bunch of unorganized bees and a, and a broken hive, pretty much. Y'all all organized. Um, and we all got the power to do it. I've, every local artist here has music that's like, yo, I listen to when I'm in the gym. It's like, you're a local person, you're not, you're not the baby, you're not Drake, you somebody who lived down the street from me. My cousin took your pictures, you went to school with me, you're younger than me, and I'm listening to your music as I'm working out or as I'm going through whatever I'm going through. People are coming up to me talking about they seen quotes and heard some of my music, like, y'all really love that song. So everybody got more power than what they think they do and everybody got more power than what they allow themselves to have. So speak to that a little bit more, right? So there's two kinds of people right now. <clears throat> well, there's a lot of different kinds of people, but one demographic is people who are from the city and feel like exactly what you just said. I have to leave the city to be on the brinks of the opportunity I'm looking for. I want you to speak to that person and say, because the passion that you're speaking with and the passion that you rap with, the passion that you tell stories with was incubated in this city. And someone needs to understand how something like that can be in the same environment they are and they ain't got it, right? So to the person who thinks they gotta leave to be great, what do you have to say to them? Um, I feel like if that's what you gotta do, if that's what you honestly calculatively feel like that that's gonna be better for you to go to this city or go to this city to go to go blossom and flourish because it's easy to get drowned out. <clears throat> if all y'all are wearing gray, you won't stand out if you're wearing dark gray, you know what I mean? But if this city's wearing all bright red and you go to gray, then you know what I mean, you're gonna stand out. If you feel like your sound or like, yo, the resources that you need can be provided if you go elsewhere, do what you gotta do. Uh, but I feel like everybody that's in every city feels that way too. You know what I mean? Artists from Cali or Compton might have to go to New York because, you know, they don't sound nothing like New Yorkers in Compton. Or New Yorkers might have to go to Atlanta. Or Atlanta people might have to go to Chicago. Like, everybody kind of has to step out their own nest to fly a little differently. You know what I mean? Um, 
and it's not necessarily a shot to a specific hometown, but once you get kind of wrapped up in the politics and the every day to day living and the situational living in any city, it can trap you if you let it. So just because you in Chicago, which is the mildly bigger city too, you can still flourish there, but you can leave somewhere else too. Or if you were from Evansville, you might be God at Evansville just because it's a smaller market. You just pretty much go where you can be God at. You know what I mean? If, if go, go where you can be God at. You know what I mean? Because uh, I, I went away for school. I mean, I was probably only an hour or some change away. I went away for school. I'm, I'm in that town guy, so I just went to Terre Haute and went to school there. That's one of the smallest, most racist towns in the world, but that's where I had to get my degree at. And I came back up here and I put other people on game. So let's look at the flip side of that, right? So you, you just spoke to the people from that, thinking about taking things to the next level, feel like they got to leave. What about the people who aren't from that and are thinking about, this might be the city for me? You got to sell them. What do you say? Um, we got everything you need. People don't fail to realize the Midwest is pretty much like a transit center for the entire country. Nobody in Nap, or even the Midwest period, in my opinion, or Nap speaking, nobody is from Nap, like technically. Like, even in Chicago, a lot of Chicago descendants are Mississippians. You know what I mean? Everybody from Chicago was a descendant of somebody from Mississippi. You know what I mean? A lot of West Coast music, like the Gene Funk that we know about, from Parliament of Funk, the Delta Cats is from Ohio. You know what I mean? It's a transit city. People will, will siphon here, stay here for a second because, I mean, cheap cost of living. It's easy to get a job here, you know, do what they need to do here, build it up and keep it pushing. I feel like every artist should almost be like, as far as their music, rap, dance or whatever, they should be like the walking brochure of kind of where they're from. Like, I need to know, I always use this example, like the game. I remember the West Coast hip hop scene was kind of devoid of a, of a primary like front runner for so long after Tupac, Big, I mean, of course you had Snoop, but Snoop was already Snoop. They was like, we need somebody new from the West. The game was that. Oh, you from Compton too? All right, bet. What is Compton like through your eyes? I need to know what the city of Compton is like based on the brochure that you gave me, which is your album. Oh, my experiences in Compton are such and such, such and such, such and such, whether it's gangs or, I mean, whether it's whatever it is, you need to be the walking brochure to wherever you're at, and it needs to be authentic and transparent. Then people will have more faith in what you, what you bring, your product, your delivery, and more faith in where you come from, and I have a different level of respect if you're transparent with it, you know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. But if you could describe Naptown in three words, what would they be and why? Versatile underrated and uh so versatile underrated and wild card mm. i feel like versatile because we got everything that any other city has to offer that people can that people typically stop through here catch the game and go somewhere else with uh indianapolis does that uh, any city pretty much does that really you know what i mean everybody got some game to where people eat up and then they go somewhere else with it um Underrated, you know, sometimes it can be very captain of the playground. Like, I sold out this many shows, bro. You've been going to the show, you've been selling out this show for the past decade. I need to see you on the VMAs or something like that. I can drive up the street and see the show every day, you know what I mean? Get a smoothie while I watch you. You know what I mean? I'm not knocking that, but it's like you gotta grow somehow, you know what I mean? If you're the nicest in the room, you need to get out that room then, you know what I mean? Whenever you're the nicest in the room, you're still in the wrong room. Um, and then uh, I would say wild card because you typically don't necessarily know what really to expect. Even in my process of battling, it's just like, I've seen so many different people from so many different walks of life that I wouldn't even be surprised when even battle rap fans, they brought something way different. That it, in, my, in my own personal experience, I was able to reach out and touch beyond what I seen them on TV. And I'm like, oh, you oh you from such and such? Hey, that's tight. When did you get in battle rap? Oh, we got this in this city. I love it here, man. I love the culture here. A lot of out-of-towners come and talk about they love the culture anywhere. Everybody is a fan of something that they're not used to. You know what I mean? It's a fan of something they're not used to. You go to vacation, man, I can stay here forever. That's because you're not a local. You know what I mean? I'm sure people in Miami is like, I can't wait. To, I can't wait to get out of Miami. Everybody want to get out of Atlanta. Everybody want to go to Atlanta because they're not local. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So I feel like everybody has something to offer in a specific spot, and it's just a matter of acknowledging the power that everybody else has. And people are afraid to sometimes stick out and be different because the per the first person is always over the hill catch the most arrows, pretty much. So I've always been willing to do that. Give me the arrows. I don't care. What you gonna do about it? Give me the arrows. I've been I've been the first person to always catch all the arrows all my life. I deflect them, take them, put them back, 
you know what I mean, and speak of spinning back out. So that's why I say it's a wild card. You never know what you're going to expect. You never know what we, we about to get the Super Bowl probably what, like a year or two. You yep. know what I mean? A few years ago, we wasn't even, you know what I mean? That wasn't even in the plans. That wasn't even in the realm of possibility that the Indianapolis would even get the Super Bowl. You know, but we're about to get it. You know, they probably had to do a lot of construction all over the place to make the city on par, but we about to get it. So, uh, the unpredictability is like, um, you know, Indianapolis is kind of, I used to get, it kind of used to annoy me when people be like, there ain't nothing to do here. There's something to do with every day, at all times. There's always a flyer to do something. It might, it might not be what you used to or what you're willing to reach out and do. There's always something to do here at all times. And it would just take you just walking down the street and you'll stumble upon some, oh, I didn't even know they even do that here. What's this called? Oh, okay. Now you go to that spot every Sunday of whatever festival, whatever they got, or when trees used to happen a whole lot. I mean, they stopped because of COVID, but when trees used to happen a whole lot, I didn't go to start going to trees till I got back from school. I didn't know what it was. I'm like, oh, this is what they do? Oh, okay. Oh, y'all know me? I ain't even put out, I've been in school. You, you never really know what you'll see. I remember when I was like 19, John, y'all don't know the director of the Step Ups, uh, Step Up Dance movies, John and Chu was here at Steak and Shake downtown. I'm like, me and my friends was like, is that, is that? Yeah, we was kind of fair because like, is that John that Joe I got? Oh, I got John. You know what I mean? We got pictures with him and everything. Who would have known we would have seen that? Like, just in a random steak and shake right downtown. We all just 19, 18, graduate high school, about to go to school. Just in there stopping to get some food, playing around. And we see the, and this is when dance was life at one point. A, B, D, C, jab, all that type of stuff. We see the director of the Step Up movies downtown. Big old tour bus. And he take a picture with us, stop and talk with us, is humble. You don't know what you expect. You know, you never know what you'll get. You won't know who you'll see. Um, you know, people would have seen probably Babyface walking down the street like, oh, is that, is that, ain't that, you know what I mean? But like I said, you never know what you'll see. You never know what you'll get because even if you're not from a specific city, you become adopted to that. So then you start to add to that, like an adopted child that might not be biologically related to y'all, that might have came to y'all family when he was a teenager, but he's a part of y'all family now. He can sit at the table. He's probably from this city, but he can sit at the table with y'all now. Now he's coming to the dinners. Now he's cooking his own rendition. He's adding to this family now. So you got inherited just by proxy. You know what I mean? You'll never know who you'll see. You'll never know what you'll necessarily get. I got adopted into the battle league kind of on accident just people knowing who I was like oh you should come about I'm like man all right I guess I'll do it did not expect for it to blow up like it did you know what I mean uh YouTube videos the whole nah I didn't expect to blow up like that um I was rapping in expo and classic I remember I <laughs> I think I was rapping and Chingy was on stage <laughs> you know what I mean big old t-shirt with the two-tone do-rag and we dressed horribly back in the days I'm not even gonna say nothing but it was I, a phase, bro. It was yeah, a phase. Whew, it, it was, and that was a that was a phase. But I remember seeing him and just always trying to rap with or battle whoever the nicest who I thought was, oh, you you don't want to see the park. I got verses. What are we doing? Because I was just always that little hungry competitive dude wanting to just run up and just compete and, and show out in front of whoever. But like I said, you never know who you'll see. Never know what you'll get. You'll never know what talent that somebody got that you yeah. might be working in the post office with. He probably can paint a mural. Uh, on his spare time, but feel like this post office job is his end all be all. It's just like, no, nah, you can get this money at the post office because you know, I got good benefits. They definitely do, though. Know, great benefits, you know what I mean? My packages don't be coming on time, but they don't. Because they, don't they got have, such good benefits, bro. The, the benefits, you know what I mean? I've been tracking this package for like three oh, days. Mate. Why ain't it got to the loading dock yet? Well, give me my shoes, man. But you know what I mean? You never know what, never know who you're running to or who this person might know. And that's exactly what's always happening to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so last last two questions, bro. First question is, so you clearly passionate about how you tell stories, mm -hmm. right? Whether you're talking about rapping, battle rapping, dancing, artistry generally, right? You're you're an artist with a hell of a story that has a hell of a skill set at telling stories. What's the relationship between your passion for that form of art and that? Like, did you, was it something about the city that taught you that? Was it an experience that you had in the city that taught you that? What's the relationship between that and, and that for you? Um, like I said, I've always been adversary based and I've always felt misunderstood, but I kind of thrived off of that too. Because 
thrived off of that doubt because the more I got doubted, it was the more reason. I'm like, okay, since y'all doubted me that much more, I know what who I am, what I can do. I'm about to body everything. I know that person, that person, that person. If we having a little rap cypher or whatever, there's 10 of us, I'm going to be the last two standing. Me and this dude going to duel it out until one of us fall out. You know what I mean? Whether it was balance or not, or just, just confidence in things, period, because I was an athlete all my life, too. Ran track, played football, basketball, gymnastics, uh, parkour, the whole nine. Um, I just always wanted to compete. Um, the city, because I always felt like I was misunderstood, but the same reasons why I was misunderstood is the same things that attracted people. You know what I mean? If everybody wearing braids and you got a fade, they're going to be asking you, why you, why you cut your hair? They're going to be questioning you, but they're going to be interested as well. Um, you know, I would go to Expo, rap with different people. I would always sound different. I used to always have my voice compared to like Ja Rule or DMX or something like that. So this 12, 13 year old little kid, little light skinned kid, probably like this tall probably with this grown man voice. And everybody just kind of thought I was an anomaly. And I loved it though. I'm rapping against this person in Expo. I'm performing on certain stages and I don't sound like any of these people. So they either hate me, love me, or are confused about me. And then that confusion, I can kind of make malleable, was malleable enough to where I can get them on the side that likes me. Um, you know, as a dancer, not too many, we had like a big dance phase here. Um, one of the few b-boys in the city at that time, you know, I can do that. One of the few people that was reading Malcolm X books, you know, at 12 and 13 and would watch all his speeches more than TV. And I would talk to these people about these at 12 and 13 years old. Like I'm on their age length. Um, just talking to certain local artists and just feeling like I either wasn't accepted or I couldn't match. I'm like, why Why am I not matching? Why am I, am I different from these? What am I not doing? And it's like, don't fiend for the acceptance, just fiend for the respect. And I'm like, okay, because they're going to respect you because you're not meant to fit in. You know what you, I mean? You're not, you're not meant to fit in here. You're trying to park an F-150 in a small car garage and you're not supposed to do that. You know what I mean? I just felt like I was an F-150 trying to fit into these spaces and it's like, I'm not meant to be a Corvette. Mm. I'm F-150 for a reason. You know what I mean? Um, so, I want to ask you one more question, but I want to make sure that um, I teach on something else that you said too. I think the way you describe your experience in Indianapolis is kind of how Indianapolis is amongst other cities, right? You talk about the idea of the adversary and the misunderstood. And I'd also say, you didn't say this part, but I think you insinuated it, the underestimated, right? I think when people think about Indianapolis or NAP amongst other cities, we are the misunderstood, the underestimated, the ones that's not supposed to be able to succeed with an underdog. Right? And in large part, that sounds like it's been your story. But here you are. You're a black story on a, on a beautiful stage. Indianapolis, Nap can learn something from that. So how did you find strength in being the adversary? Because I think that's something that the city can, can also do when they're in conversations with other big dogs as the underdog. Uh, I think it was probably my upbringing too, liking challenges. Like I said, I'm the youngest. You know what I mean? I got an older brother and a bunch of older sisters. So I'm used to always fighting with people bigger than me or always wanting to compete with my older cousins or, you know, the other, older. I was either always the youngest and or the smallest. So they gave me a reason to always compete. So if it's like I'm nine years old, getting into a fight with somebody 14, somebody my age don't mean nothing to me at this point. Um, you know, if I've always had to have the most battles within my own neighborhood or within my own household, somebody criticizing me outside of here, oh, that's light work. I mean, you don't. When I close this door, you you couldn't you couldn't you couldn't take a nap where I'm from. You couldn't you couldn't do nothing where I had to come out of here. You know what I mean? You don't understand that. You know what I mean? A mile aside, the shoes would would have buckled you before you started. I've always that's probably where that mentality came from, and that's what I wanted to also get to other people too, like. Yeah, he's from such and such, but so what? You know what I mean? He's from the, the, the standard third. He might have a much high, more high profile media based city, but he's the regular dude just like you. He's a small fish in the big pond. Where he from too, just cause he's from a bigger, it might, he, he might have a harder fight getting his voice heard because of where he or she is from to get where that is. So it ain't necessarily where you at, it's what you do with where you at. Um, we also don't be in charge of our own, uh, our own images either. When the outsiders look at Indiana, they just think of cornfields and the honky tonk music and the home of the clan. It's like, nah, bro, drive 30 minutes up to this road and you'll see, but we just like y'all. Don't let, we letting the wrong people tell our stories and hold the, mm. uh, 
and hold the images, hold the power to our own images. And see, the where you're positioned right now, this is the last question, where you're positioned right now, you're in a position to tell the story. Mm -hmm. You've been telling the story today. And you've positioned yourself in the way you've answered the previous questions. People are listening, right? The city's listening to you. And you don't speak on behalf of anybody but yourself. And I'm sure that you wouldn't do that anyway. Mm -hmm. But the city's listening, you know? What's, what do you want to tell them? These are your last words. What do you want to tell the city right now because they listen? <clears throat> it's, it's, it's not a race, it's a pace. That's all that is. And you just got to acknowledge that you can still compete. Impossible is only impossible until somebody seems to get, until somebody does it. They don't mind jumping from the free throw line before Dr. Jess, before Jordan. Now people throwing it off the glass, doing a front flip and landing on their finger at the dunk contest. They had to see it done first. Somebody got to be willing to catch the arrows and somebody got to be okay with catching the arrows. And it might not come in their era. It might not. Like the Black Panthers might not have saw justice in their time, in their lifetimes. But for somebody else in that next decade, that's what they landed down for. So don't be so selfish and, to, and don't be so selfish and don't be so um, worried of thinking that because you might not see the fruits of your labor that everybody else can't eat off them same fruits because fruits of labor always have seeds in them. So the seeds help them grow as well. So. That's love. I appreciate you, King. Appreciate yes, you, bro. We're done. And that was fun. That was a ball. Like my guy. I'm not going to go. Our stories, our legacy, our city.